Jesse Metcalf must be John Tucker. Best known at the time for his oft shirtless turn as gardener John Rowland on Desperate Housewives, then 26 year old Jesse Metcalf was cast as the titular jerk before any of his female co stars were on board. I had a little bit of input as to who they cast, not a lot, but a little bit the actor shared with E News in 2006, though he wouldn't name names when it. Kamita, who passed the chemistry test with flying colors and who needed to put in some extra study time. It was tough to cut anybody. I mean, I didn't really have that much power where I could say, no, I don't want her in the movie, Metcalf added, noting. Thad wasn't responsible for any epic what might have been scenarios, but they definitely took my suggestions into consideration. At the end of the day, he said, I think they really did a great job putting together a really all-star young podcast. Varsity Squad, Metcalf's leading ladies bonded on screen and off no love quadrangle necessary. Sophia Bush raved to movie web about the friendship she formed with co-stars. Britney Snow, Ashanti and Ariel Kebel on the Vancouver set. And these girls, I couldn't get through a month without talking to them if I tried, said the One Tree Hill star, who played Beth, animal lover and John. Tucker girlfriend number three. And we all, whether it was amazing things or not so great things, we all had a lot going last summer and we all pulled each other. Through a lot. And I knew that there was something to it when, at 4am, if, one of us was having a problem we could call the other and we'd all end up. Sleeping in each other's beds all the time. It was sleep away camp, it was slumber party time, it was incredible and fun. She recalled one night toward the end of filming, when they were all hanging out in Snow's room, just because. Brittany and I were on the couch and wet ordered food and we're chowing down, and Ariel's over in the armchair and we're all writing and she's putting together a package and Ashanji's over sitting at the desk and she's got her headphones on and she's working on her new song, Bush said. And we're jamming and we're at that point where we weren't even talking, we just wanted to be together. And I was like, this is what I have with my best girlfriends, and this is cover boy. But the girls did gang up on John Tucker in real life, just a bit. The best prank that we played on Jesse, which didn't go over well at the time, is that we printed out a bunch of shirtless pictures of him that were in magazine sand put them all on set. Snow told us weekly in 2016. He was so embarrassed and not happy with us, but we thought it was hilarious. But he handled it like he a champ. I am sure he wanted to kill us secretly. High school reunion. Snow and Ashanti had worked together before in 2002, when the singer guest starred as Dionne Warwick on Snow's bandstand air NBC series American Dreams. I remember, I signed an autograph for her, yeah, Ashanti, who in 2002 became the first woman to simultaneously hold the number one and number two positions on the Billboard 100 with Always On Time and What's Love, told MovieWeb. I remember that the whole time, it was a good time. I remember, Britney, was so small and young and I signed her autograph. She was cool. Music to Snow's ears. The actress, who's six years younger than Ashanti, remembered being a little nervous when she started working with the hitmaker, who played head cheerleader Heather, on John Tucker. I actually told her that the first day, Snow recalled. I was like, you don't even understand what a huge fan I was of yours, and I still am, but I have to be cool. And she started laughing in that infamous Ashanti laugh, she's basically the most amazing girl ever, and it was really cool to see somebody who's actually so talented and so famous, and then yet be so gracious and just a real girl. I love that. A other, cracking his way into comedy. Metcalf told E! News that the famous scene in which Caden treats John to put on thong underwear thong and sends him to the wrong hotel room during an awake metric was not in the original script. Probably for good reason. Actually, Betty Thomas kind of broke the thong idea to me gently, he recalled, laughing. She was like, Jesse, I want you to wear a thong in the movie. And I was. Like, what? I don't think so, that's not gonna happen. But, all's well that rear ends well. Over a three-day period she kind of convinced me, Metcalf said. It is a comedy, you've got to go there, you got to do. Whatever it takes to get the laugh. So I went there, no regrets. Not only did he get the laugh, he added, I feel like I pull it off. And as if there was any doubt Snow told us weekly, that was actually him. Jesse and I were in the gym every morning before work and after work before. Filming that scene, it was just me and Jesse hanging out at the gym looking at each other like, I can't believe this is our lives. That was really him. He worked really hard. Blue light special. If the film's director, Betty Thomas, looks familiar, that's because she's none other than Phyllis Neffler's arch nemesis, Belda Plender, from the 1989 classic troupe Beverly Hills. In addition to being an Emmy winning actress and director for Hill Street Blues in 1985 and Dream On in 1993, respectively, her filmmaking. Credits include the Brady Bunch movie, Private Parts, Dr. Doolittle, and 28 Days. Sponsored links by Tabula, dog breeds that are so loyal they're considered Velcro dogs. Senior Mag, the boy next door, that's Taylor Kitsch and future star of his own John movie, John Carter, making his feature debut as the neighbor who goes gaga over Kate's hot mom. Laurie played by Jenny McCarthy, when they move to the neighborhood. 
Less than three months later, Friday Night Lights premiered and Kitsch became everyone's favorite existentially wounded high school heartthrob. Elements for success Speaking of being on the verge of stardom, a year before Gossip Girl premiered Penn Badgley charmed as John Tucker's more lucky brother Scott the other. Tucker, who appreciates Kate for who she really is, asked if she thought Kate and Scott were still together 10 years later, Snow told Us Weekly in 2016, I hope. I don't know, figure like a high school sweetheart. I am. Sure if they're not still together, they are still really good friends because they listened to podcasts together and were the original hipsters. Nose for news. Kebble, who played Gary, head of the Forest Hills High School TV station and your requisite teen movie, type of overachiever, had a history of reporting on the pressing topics of the day. I remember I was in fifth grade, and I was on the school news show, she told Movie Web. We made a song about not doing drugs, and it was like to stop in the name of love. So we did this whole dance, like, stop, and say no to drugs, and give yourself a hug, think it oh, oh, over. We did this whole thing, and I was in fifth grade on the school news. So I think going back into even elementary school, I think I was meant to be Carrie Sheffer, because I have you no problem giving it my all on the school news. Sponsored links by Tabula, Kumkathi Sudcap Sofa Shiki L15% CHXAPLAIKEA.CO.TH. IKEA Pray This The Pressed Memories. Snow passed on taking a beaker from the chem lab, but she did keep the flowers that were in her hair when John kissed Kate aboard yacht. I told the hair and makeup lady that I wanted a fun updo on the boat so it didn't get messed up when it was windy, she told us weekly. And she did. This elaborate updo that's so ridiculous. If you go back and watch the movie it's like, why would Kate ever have that elaborate of a hairdo? And she put, flowers in my hair, so I think I still have those flowers somewhere. They've got game. Asked by Chuck the Movie Guy whether the scene of Kate, Beth, Carrie and Heather playing a video game was a bit of catnip for male audiences, Snow replied. With some edge, they underestimate girls play video games. Bush concurred, absolutely. For her part, Snow was working on her Madden skills, Kevl was a Halo fan and a Shanxi specialty was Mortal Kombat. Having a ball. Unbelievably, no noses were broken in the making of the gym fight scene, in which Carrie, Beth and Heather find out they're all dating John Tucker and refusing to be invisible any longer, Kate tries to break it up. I remember it was early on in the shooting and we were just laughing so hard at the absurdity of throwing volleyballs at each other, Snow recalled to us. Weekly, we knew right away that we were going to click. We got along so well, that volleyball scene was just ridiculous and I was getting hit in the head. Over and over again even though it hurt. Ultimately, she added, I guess I only got hit in the head like five or six times. It was a really lame fight sequence. Maybe the lamest fight sequence of all. Time, Colin Firth and Hugh Grant would disagree. Kebble told Chuck the movie guy, oh, I really got hit in the head, time and time and time again. But, she added, all four of them really wanted to be in the scene, and the more real we could make it by slapping each other, dot the more fun it was, it became more comical. Sponsored links by Tabula, Bang Bon, prices for unsold SUVs might surprise you. Best SUV to buy, sponsored listings. Behind the scenes support. In 2007, Snow opened up about her struggles with eating disorders, and facing a potentially unhealthy situation when she went to shoot the film right after. Getting out of treatment. After nearly a month of treatment, I left a few days early to go straight to the set of John Tucker Must Die. I had gained about 10 pounds, she recalled to people, I was 120, which I SNT big. But I can understand why the producers wanted me in shape for a scene in my underwear. They were nice about it. They hurried a trainer and suggested a diet. Thank goodness for my co-stars Sophia Bush and Ariel Kebble, she continued. I told them, you have to look out for me, because this is so hard. We would work out together and then they would pull me off the treadmill, and Sophia would be like, maybe you should eat this. We had slumber parties. I started having fun, which was unheard of. Before, it was, I can't have fun. I can't go eat a burger with my friends. How many calories are in that burger? John Tucker would like a word. Metcalf has long since resigned himself to having people calling him John Tucker on the street, but apparently some people just can't resist when they come across the actor Jonathan Tucker, either. I ran into him on the street in Vancouver one time, when we were working on different projects in Canada, Metcalf told to Fab in March. He told me that being named John Tucker was the bane of his existence because everyone was, you know, always referencing that movie. When they met him, true story, also talking to two Fab, Tucker confirmed, every time I get it it's annoying. The Westworld and Snowfall actor remembered seeing Metcalf in Vancouver too, recalling, I am like you son of a gun, you're dragging my name through the street. It wasn't me. For good reason, Metcalf wanted to assure audiences that he was nothing like the scrupulous John Tucker, though by the time he got the role, he was more familiar with the BMOC treatment than he had been when he actually was in high school. Either way, he knew the type. 
Every actor has to find a way to relate to his character, he explained to Movie Web in 2006, and I think the person I am now, or maybe more so the person I was too. Dear Sago, was pretty closer closer to John Tucker. I wanted this character to be likable and I think I pulled that off, I took a couple of small cues. From me personal John Tucker from my high school and then I threw some of myself in there. But the person I was in high school, polar opposite, I was not. John Tucker in high school.